Today we're going to start uh, into the third chapter of the book of Colossians. And, uh, but before we do that, there are some gems from the second chapter that I want to uh, kind of kind of just review with you. Uh, you ready for that? I think it'll be a good reminder. So these are just some thoughts from chapter 2 to put into practice. And the first one is that separation and distance and most likely time are not obstacles to our prayers. Our prayers for others and our testimony are a source of encouragement to others. Our prayers for others is called intercession and I think they're often more effective than when we pray for ourselves. And then everything you need to know about salvation is discovered in and through Jesus. Jesus is with us, so, so we are to be with other believers, e even if we've never seen them face to face. There is a unity. Our acts of love are a demonstration of the substance of our faith. And when you acknowledge and believe and commit, asking God to accept your faith in Christ, He makes you part of the kingdom. Uh, we have to have a firm grasp on truth. Um, once we know the basics, there's work to do. There's work to do. And a sign of being right with God is a thankful heart. Don't get spiritually off track. Use your common sense so you won't be dragged away into uselessness by pervasive, persuasive arguments of influential people. Presenting the gospel in a relevant manner is crucial, but misrepresenting the gospel for the sake of cultural relevancy, well, no, that's destructive. Intellectual belief or conforming to some formula or undergoing some ritual, it's not the golden ticket to heaven. What you do matters. That's what's most important. Everything you need to know on how to thrive spiritually is open to the public. All you need to know is found in Jesus. The stars don't control your destiny, nor the past seal your fate. Jesus sets his disciples free. Jesus and you today create all your tomorrows. Now faith allows you to appropriate the accomplishments of Jesus and to make them your very own. Everything you need to, to, to be saved, everything you need to be saved has already been done for you. God's desire is a circumcision of your heart that results in you becoming a lover. And Jesus has opened the cell door and invites you to walk out of estrangement and into reconciliation. Any ritual is meaningless if it's not the result of faith in Jesus. If there's no fruit from your faith, you have to discover why that's so. If you're a believer and never been baptized, Participate in the ritual out of a heart of obedience. Once you've been set free from sin and death and made alive in Christ, you don't return living the old way. Discern between God's will and the religious rules of the world to avoid the IRNs, the infantile religious nonsense. And then discern between a word or a vision from God and the delusions of someone's mind. Discern between a Christ-centered leader and an ego-centered leader. And if someone is ordering you, trying to manipulate you or to coerce you, work your exit strategy. Now you can find all those thoughts in greater detail on our website, www.hbcc.life, or you can check it out on our YouTube channel, simply HBCC Life. I just would encourage you, put them into practice. Put them into practice. And you start to put them into practice by simply testifying about your faith in Jesus. In, in your heart of hearts, you've already acknowledged that sin separated you from God and from the life that you felt you should be living in. And you believe that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life who forgives your sins and reconciles you to God. You have committed yourself to follow Jesus. You bent the knee, continually saying, Yes, Lord, yes. And then you ask God to save you. And He did. Tell people. Tell others. 
And if you never put your faith in Christ Jesus for salvation, let me know. And I can try to answer any questions you might have. And if you don't have questions for me, now's a good time to ask God to receive your faith. And He'll change your life. Well, beginning with chapter 3, Paul is going to encourage us in, in, in the life. It's as if in the first two chapters he did a lot of theology. And now he's getting into a lot of the practice, the how-tos. We're going to explore, first of all, in, in this first session, uh, the, the cultural background that will give us insight into Paul's teaching about baptism. And then the expectations of a person who calls Jesus Lord. And so let's look at Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along with your eyes to the ground, absorb with the things right in front of you. Look up, be alert to what's going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from His perspective. Verse 3, your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He's your life. When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you'll show up too. The real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. Amen. Well, a person enters the kingdom of God by faith. But at this time, a person entered into the fellowship of the church through baptism. Two very different things. Baptism at that time was by immersion when water was available. And it's an imitation of John the Baptist baptizing the repentant in the Jordan River. Jesus himself was baptized by John. And baptism is a public proclamation of your faith and commitment to be a follower of Jesus. When you submitted to baptism, you symbolically died and rose with Jesus. In the submerging, you are buried in death, identifying with the death of Jesus. He died to make it possible for you to live righteously. The death symbolized in, in baptism is a death to your old ways of living. It's a death to self-centeredness, self-rule, from, from, from self-exaltation. The old is gone, the Scripture says. The old attachments, the old addictions, the old curses, the old labels no longer dictate your choices. Their power is gone. Now you choose your behaviors. No longer can the old ways hijack your best intentions. So you die to the old way of life, and the old way loses its controlling power. And you have left the old way behind. Romans 6.3 Didn't you realize we packed up and left there for good? This is what happens in baptism. When we went under the water, we left the old country of sin behind. When we went under the water. But, but we're not kept under the water, are we? Not at all. When you rise from this watery grave, you rise a different person. You see, you have identified with Jesus' resurrection and with it the hope that you too will be raised bodily. On the last day, you've gone into a whole new way of being. The old is gone. The new has come. Now you are living a resurrection life. Again, back to Romans 6, verses 3 through 4. The scripture says, when we come up out of the water, we enter into a new country of grace, a new life. In a new land. That's what baptism into the life of Jesus means. When you're lowered into the water, it's like the burial of Jesus. When you're raised up out of the water, it's like the resurrection of Jesus. Living the resurrection. The world, its value system, all its glimmering and shimmer and glory, it loses its appeal. Old ambitions evaporate. The follower of Jesus has a, a new focus, a, a new intent, a new desire. And that is simply this. To love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. And their neighbor, the others in their world, with that same love. Now, 
instead of getting, there's a concentration on giving. Instead of ruling, now it'll be serving. Instead of vengeance, it's forgiveness. Love instead of hate, peace. Instead of conflict, encouragement. Instead of criticism, kindness. Instead of judgment, righteousness. Instead of sin, obedience to God. Instead of rebellion, reconcile to God. You are a new person, spiritually alive, with a new lease on life. And have you entered the water, symbolizing repentance, leaving the old ways behind? Immerse in the water, symbolizing death to the old way? Have you been raised from the water, symbolizing that new life resurrected in Christ? Have you left the water, symbolizing your intent and desire to live your life to the fullest under the guidance of the Holy Spirit? My friends, if you have asked the Father to accept your faith in Jesus, then baptism is your testimony to the fact that Jesus saves you now. It's a public declaration. And in other letters, the Apostle Paul wrote, for me to live is Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. See, now life is Christocentric, Jesus-centered. It's no longer self-centered. You seek to see all, all of life, from His perspective. And all of a sudden, the things of earth become the tools that you use to further the kingdom and the quality of the intimacy of the relationships that you share with others. In fact, relationships become the most important thing in your life. Verse 3, it contains this uh, play on words that we don't see in the English translation, but I guarantee you that the Colossian readers of the original language caught what Paul was saying. So in verse 3 it says, Your old life is dead, your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. Now, what's going on here is a very subtle comparison between the teachings of Gnosticism, the false teachers, and Christianity. That word invisible, or in other translations, the word is used hidden, it's really a dig. You know, you would chuckle if you read it in the original language. You go, <laughs> what, a, what a pun that one is. Paul is telling his readers, hey, the Gnostics, they have their wisdom hidden in books. He says, but you, Jesus is wisdom. And the followers of Jesus have their lives hidden in him. Hidden knowledge doesn't save. Christ in you does. So that's what he's really saying right there. Well, what you need to know about baptism is it's not a ritual that allows you to enter the kingdom of God. Faith in what God has already done for you, acknowledge, believe, commit, ask, that brings a reconciliation. That puts you into the kingdom. Baptism, at the time of Paul, and he wrote this letter, was entrance into the fellowship of the church. Do you see the difference? Paul then goes on to proclaim that what is hidden will be revealed when Jesus comes again. So, at this time, followers of Jesus are not highly regarded. Some despise them. They're a cult of atheists. They don't believe in the gods. They're disloyal to the state. They're saying Jesus is Lord, not Caesar. And later, there's going to be charges of orgies and cannibalism. Those will be leveled. So there's going to be no esteem, no respect, and basically Christians are no good. And all such will be turned upside down when Jesus comes again. When Jesus' glory is revealed, so that glory will manifest in every one of Jesus' followers. And in the instant of Jesus' return, the real you will be fully revealed from obscurity and being discarded and being persecuted and spit on, all of a sudden you'll be seen to be a person of great worth, acknowledged by God Himself. Until that return, keep following, keep loving, keep on faithing in front of all the obstacles this world's going to throw at you. Sorry about those.
those coughs. Too much fun last night singing. One thing that you should put into practice from today's message, maybe a couple things. First of all, you are expected. God expects you to live the life of a disciple. How do you know? Well, deeds of love are characteristic of a disciple. Love entails obedience to God in all things. No compromise. Love encompasses meeting the needs of others. Going out of your way to be an encouragement. Love embraces partnering with the Holy Spirit's sanctifying power to transform us into an ever-increasing likeness to our Savior. So you're expected to live the resurrection life. A new you. You're expected to overcome the old ways of life that have lost their controlling power as you continually bend your knee to the will of God. Walk away with that. Put that into practice. Go do it. Go 